Do you guys know what capitulation tastes like? Apparently, Vitalik does. Ready? Let's go. Let's not be overly dramatic here. Nobody's saying that Ethereum is giving up on Ethereum or Ethereum 2.0 or anything like that. But it's becoming more and more clear that Ethereum is capitulating on doing everything that I think a lot of ETH fans thought they were going to do and everything they would have to do to be a true pure competitor of Cardano. This is a Cointelegraph article entitled, Even Vitalik Buterin is surprised at just how long ETH2 is taking. And look at this drawing. One thing about Cointelegraph, they do a good job on the drawings. Vitalik should use this for his dating profile. So this article is about a speaking engagement Vitalik had. Vitalik stated, according to the article, that ETH2 will be able to have the kind of scalability that the large-scale enterprise applications expect when roll-ups and sharding are combined. However, that is unlikely to occur before late 2022, per the latest roadmap estimates. The two chains, so the beacon chain and the actual main net that the smart contracts are running on will merge. And in Ethereum, sometimes they call that the docking in late 2021 or early 2022. Whenever a crypto project says late anything or early anything, I usually assume best case scenario, it's going to be the early, but probably more like the mid part of the early. So this could happen in early 2022 or maybe even mid 2022. We actually have a merging of the beacon chain and the main net. But, and here's the key part, phase one, which introduces scalability through sharding is not expected until late 2022 at this stage. So let's go directly to the Ethereum documentation. Here we see it, the merge. When is it shipping? Approximately, that symbol means approximately 2021, 2022. So I take that to mean definitely 2022. <laughs> So if we go down here, relationship between upgrades, the merge and shard chains. Originally, the plan was to work on shard chains before the merge to address scalability. However, with the boom of layer two scaling solutions, the priority has shifted to swapping proof of work to proof of stake via the merge. There it is, guys. The priority has shifted. Whenever you see shifting priorities in crypto projects, you know, sometimes they're just responding to the market. Sometimes they figure out that the market doesn't have demand for something they wanted to build and they're shifting to something the market is actually demanding. However, that's not always the source of shifting priorities. Sometimes it's because a project doesn't know how to do what they were originally going to do. And so they shift their priorities to do something they actually maybe know how to do. So Ethereum is deprioritizing scaling of the mainnet via sharding, and they're going to focus all their attention on moving from proof of work to proof of stake. Their excuse as to why this is okay is that layer two, according to them, like, hey, layer two is booming. We don't need to worry about scaling the mainnet right now because layer two is so good. So when we click, click on their link, in their documentation to go to their layer, their big layer two solution is rollups. And by rollups, they mean ZK rollups. So we've, we've covered ZK snarks before on this channel in the context of uh, Cardano's mithril type solution, where they're going to make light wallets as, uh, as trustless as full node wallets. The very same concept that Ethereum is talking about down here. So what Ethereum is going to do is they're going to run a whole bunch of their transactions off chain. They're going to run those off chain very quickly because they're not on chain. Then they're going to roll all those transactions up into a bundle. And then that bundle is going to be represented on chain by a zero knowledge proof. Right. So you run a bunch of transactions off chain and then you represent those on chain with a zero knowledge proof. So makes sense. We we know we know this is going to work. This is like established, you know, established cryptography. Uh, but the question is, sure, any any crypto project these days, any modern Gen 3 crypto project is going to have is going to have layer two. Uh, available to them. They're going to say, you know, hey, 
we're going to pursue, you know, any any performance, you know, optimizations we can through layer two. But why isn't Ethereum pursuing layer one as well, like Cardano has? So if you uh, if you watch this channel frequently, you know we occasionally watch CCTV footage of uh, meetings of the core developers of other crypto projects, and here I've got some footage for you of it. This is CCTV actual footage of uh, Vitalik meeting with the core developers of uh, Ethereum. So we'll we'll label them. I, I can actually write on the CCTV footage. So these are the core developers over here. And this is Vitalik over here. You can see he's got a very long neck. That's how we know that's Vitalik in the footage here. So it's like Vitalik walks into the room and he's like, hey guys, how's it going? And the core developers are like, oh, hey Vitalik, uh, we're working on the blockchain trilemma. We think you, you actually maybe coined that term, but the blockchain trilemma is that it's uh, very difficult for a blockchain to achieve decentralization security and scaling. So security, decentralization, and scaling. And they're like, hey, um, we're having a lot of trouble achieving uh, scaling in the Ethereum mainnet for 2.0 because unlike Cardano, which has local state only available to scripts running on the mainnet, Ethereum has the global state of the system available to scripts running on the network. So it's very difficult to achieve scaling with this, uh, with this Ethereum system. And, uh, you know, Vitalik is kind of like Vitalik's like, okay. Um, well, everybody's, uh, oh wait, Vitalik talks like this. Okay. Everybody's, uh, breathing down my neck because, uh, Ethereum 2.0, isn't out yet uh so let's just let's just do this let's just do this right here right here we just get rid of that for mainnet and we say layer voila layer two instead of scaling on the mainnet we're going to do layer two actually it's not at all the way vitalik talks but in my mind that's how he talks so they basically just said hey unlike cardano which diligently strived to achieve a resolution of the blockchain trilemma on their main net, plus decided to do layer two on top of that, we're just going to do layer two for now. We can't figure out, my guess is, they can't figure out how to actually do scaling with the global state system they have in Ethereum on their main net. If scaling is a two-pronged attack, it's like they're only doing half of the attack, right? In Cardano, we've got Ouroboros, which has local state, so it's almost like sharding is built into the system, right? It's uh, it's ready to go, very amenable for sharding. And uh, with, uh, with Ethereum, they're like, okay, we can't figure out how to make our global state system more scalable on the base layer. So we're just gonna attack the layer two prong right and it's not that i know of they're not like putting out papers that progress academic papers that are peer-reviewed that progress the science of and technology of of zk roll-ups right i think even right in some of their documentation they're like citing all of these successful implementations of zk roll-ups that already exist so they're just kind of relying on this layer two solution that already exists as a crutch. Where have we seen this before, right? We saw this with Bitcoin. We saw this with Bitcoin. Bitcoin, the Bitcoin core developers refused to go to a big block system in the civil war. And they were like, okay, it doesn't matter because layer two. Eventually we did get the lightning network and you know, nobody, nobody I know uses the lightning network. <laughs> Nobody I know wants to use Bitcoin for transactions because while the Lightning Network exists, it's not the most convenient thing ever. And only Bitcoin super nerds want to deal with Lightning nodes. There are pros and cons to these layer two solutions. And the history of layer two solutions in the crypto world, that history is that it doesn't really lead to, it doesn't really lead to the kind of scalability you expect it does. 
everybody had very high hopes for the Lightning Network with Bitcoin, their layer two solution. And it did not lead to people buying coffee with Bitcoin again, not at any kind of scale. And I'm afraid that's what Ethereum is going to encounter. Um, they're just going to go after installing proof of stake, right? Swapping proof of work for proof of stake, which is something they certainly should do. And layer two is something they sure, certainly should pursue. So we're pretty much just getting a proof of stake network with ZK rollups for layer two. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to be able to compete effectively with Cardano if if that's all that they've got going on with ETH 2.0. And in fact, Vitalik is now even starting to take issue with that label. Back to the Cointelegraph article, here we see on the topic of ETH2, Buterin said that they are using that moniker less frequently because the team wanted to emphasize that this isn't throwing out the existing Ethereum platform and making a totally new one. It's a much more kind of incremental set of changes. Isn't this exactly what you say when you're unable to replace old technology with new technology, right? I mean, the promise wasn't, hey, we're going to incrementally improve the system. The promise was more like, hey, ETH 1.0 doesn't scale. Don't worry, ETH 2.0 is going to be this crazy whole new system that runs on proof of stake and totally scales. Now they're saying, uh, we don't even want to call it ETH 2.0. Really, it's we're not really throwing out the old Ethereum platform and making a totally new one. We're just going to incrementally improve things. This is what you say when you don't know how to rapidly improve the system on a timeline that people will be okay with. So how did we? How did they get to this place? Right. Um, Ethereum had such a gigantic lead and now we've gotten to this place where this dark horse Cardano is coming out of the shadows and, uh, they're going, they're going to achieve resolution of the blockchain trilemma, you know, becoming, you know, in my opinion, maybe the first real gen three crypto, um, they're going to achieve resolution of the trilemma before Ethereum. How did this happen? Buterin added that there had been a number of internal team conflicts in the five years it has taken Ethereum to get to where it is today. One of the biggest problems I've found with our project is not the technical problems, it's problems related with people. So I think there's actually a simple explanation as to why, uh, why Ethereum is encountering these people problems, why there's internal team conflict. So we think of a crypto project as a boat, right? You can have a captain on the boat. Is that like a bad captain's hat? Yeah. Okay. You can have a captain. And if you have a captain, the boat can sail in one direction, right? This is what we have with the development of Cardano. We have IOHK and Charles Hoskinson is leading IOHK and he can keep the boat steered in one direction. So I know everybody who's ever played Assassin's Creed Black Flag or is familiar with boats is gonna tell me that the captain should be back here where the will would be. Okay, fair enough. But when you have this very decentralized organization like Ethereum and all these core developers, and there's not really a company they all work for. Sure, there's the nonprofit foundation, but it's a lot harder to define who's responsible for what, who reports to who. And there's not one person who's like employing everybody working on the development. It looks more like this. You've got the one captain, but you've got another captain over here. And then you've got another captain over here. And then you've got another captain over here, another captain over here. And they're all like, they've all got their own ideas about which direction the boat should be going in. So instead of going in this one direction, all of a sudden the boat, somebody's like, ah, the boat should go a little bit over here. And then this captain over here is like, the boat should go a little bit over here. And this guy's like, actually, I prefer this one. This guy's like, I prefer this one. This guy's like, this is going over here. Pretty soon, the boat is just going around in circles. I think that's what we've got going on with Ethereum. And eventually, it'll be like 
it'll be like uh, some kind of a spacecraft breaking orbit. Like eventually after they've gone around and around and around enough, they're going to break orbit and they'll end up somewhere. They probably initially planned to be over here, but they're going to end up like over here and they're going to say, hey, it turned out this is a better place to be. But maybe this was the place they should have been. But because they have so many, because there's no, there's no like direct, direct accountability and everything like there is with a corporation, like with IOHK, I feel like this is what we've got going on. We've got a boat with five captains and that's why maybe it was inevitable that Ethereum would have to capitulate on some of their goals and they wouldn't be able to quite achieve what they wanted to, at least not on a timeline that's going to prevent their users from jumping over to Cardano. Talk to you tomorrow.